couple of there. Is that us, Lucas? Are we in? Yeah, and I just came back, and apparently instead of playing music, Spotify auto-played to a random other podcast. Yeah! So people have been awesome. listening to a different, like, a Destiny podcast waiting to hear this podcast happen. Do you know I what? Apologize. I can't wait. I cannot wait for whoever runs that podcast to uh, send you a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. I, I am well, well excited. I just put on, that. like, my music metal video game cover thing and, like, left it at that. I was like, I'll be back in a few minutes and it come back to another podcast. And everyone's like, that's very loud. I apologise if something's loud. Do you know what's loud? Life. Life's loud. Life is loud. Life's very fucking loud. And also, I fucking turn this light down. So, yeah, hello. Welcome, everybody, to episode 74. 74, yeah. Is it 74 of the podcast? Yeah, and I'm, I was always on John my Lucas. Say hello, Lucas. Hello, Lucas. And uh, yeah, we're once again recording this thing on Twitch. So there are people watching this live as well as listening to it after the fact. Oh, yes. It's like they're in the past. Like there's, pe- there's people in the past and there's people in the future. And, and there's sure people why. in the current time that can just yeah. see that now, you know, spring has approached and sun yeah. is beaming through my blinds. You can tell that I live in a flat where I'm in a separate room that's all dark and that Lucas is like got natural light. Yeah. Lucas has all that lovely natural light and I've just got these fucking just like eye beams everywhere. I, mean, I still have a giant like studio light pointing at the wall in front of me. Yeah, because I've actually like the pretty... face, not to the side of me. Yeah, so I've had pretty decent lighting for the last couple of weeks. And um, that's just because I had like the um, the fat fiend just equipment in the house. Yeah. So don't forget I was using like, you know, my professional grade lights but then i've taken it back to the office because yeah lockdowns um done but are we, are we too loud oh i've just realized no one can hear you i don't think oh I'm right sure. okay oh no they can they can maybe we're just too loud for them maybe yeah I don't, I, maybe so these the are uh, mighty um what's it called sensitive like i have yeah, my yes. gain at zero and the mic's what like half an arm's length away from my mouth as well and it still gets you yeah mm-hmm but yeah, how you been, man? What you been up to? Uh, today, a uh, pretty chill day. Like, I've freshened myself up. I've cut my hair. Um, I'm halfway through dyeing my hair, so I've bleached it. Okay. I was about to say, like it's looking very... Uh, the bleached like part, but I haven't put colour on it yet. So I'm, like, going to probably do that between this and uh, playing some Borderlands later. And then okay. just, like, took a nice walk with Cade today in the sun and... Uh, yeah, it's been fun, and because it's nice and sunny today, I also have a mm-hmm. brother's toffee apple cider. Oh, okay, I'm not having anything Just to like, drink, not for a while not, anyway. Like, that was the thing, of, you know that feeling when I'm like, man, it's a nice warm day today, I just feel in that mm-hmm. mood for what? I had that on Monday, and then I had it yesterday, we got like one beer yesterday, it's like, fuck it, I just want like, that ice cold beer right out of the fridge. That's really out of the freezer, that's oh, the yeah. tech. You put beer in the freezer, and you leave it in there for like an hour, and you can't, oh, it's the dream. But no, no drinks for me today, no drinks for me today. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, yeah. And like last like, thing, yeah. Nice and warm. Just one. We are saying that you, you're saying that you forgot all freshened up. I did not. <laughs> I, I did not go freshened up. I've had a really busy day today, doing a lot of like doing a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and just behind the scenes of the channel, um, and just buying stuff for the house, trying to get all that sorted out. So yeah. I am a sweaty fucking mess, and I apologise for watching like the visual version of this. Like, <laughs> damn, you're getting, you're not getting your money's worth. All those visual you, listeners out there. Yeah, you are not getting um, uh, top tier Kyle Smallwood right now. So that's an apology. I mean, that's the thing, though, isn't it? Of like, most of lockdown, we're not getting anyone at like top tier levels, are we? No, I'm not an Instagram influencer. I can't be asked about life, but um, yeah, that's like. Uh, we guess we can get into that. Just it's, it's we're into we're a year into lockdown now. I feel like people have settled into just the idea of like this is it. Yeah, this is the this is how life is just is now, and it has been incredible uh, to see just how many people refuse to accept that this is the reality. Um, that we live in now mm-hmm. and get annoyed when confronted by the reality of like lockdown when it's been a fucking year. Because uh, as mentioned, I've started moving stuff back to the fact being officers. Okay, yeah. And that's, that means I've moved all the camera back. So if anyone's been watching the videos on the channel, you'll notice that they're all recorded in my bedroom in front of a concrete wall with a green screen literally duct taped to a wall. Mm, yeah. And I, you know, that's it. The glorious and, green screen. The glorious green screen, yes. And uh, I moved everything back to the offices now because, you know, the country started to open back up again. And I just, I feel a bit more secure heading back there because I know mm-hmm. that my office where I'm based has taken a lot of precautions to make sure I think you stay safe. And I'm also, anyway, I'm in a, like, you know, a private office that no one else can get to as it is. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, you know, I posted letting people know. And the first thing I got 
was, oh, I can't wait for Lucas and the guys to get back to the office. And Lucas, as someone who is, you know, Lucas, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm not excited about that idea yet. Um, I am excited about the prospect in the future to be able to yes. be back in the office, but not at this current time because, yeah, I'm like hours away. And I think this is like the tweet I respond to, isn't it? Of like, mm-hmm. look, yes. I am not vaccinated. Fuck am no I getting on a train for two hours to go yep. and like record something that we can do, like, uh, all, albeit less fun remotely, but it, we can still do it remotely. Yeah. But it was just that idea of people seeing it and going, oh, so are you all going to be like going to the same space again anytime soon? Just thinking, you live in the same country we do. You know that's not an option that we have. Yeah. Why the fuck would you think it is because we make YouTube videos? And then, like, just that weird thing, isn't it? Of Surely as well, if they, like, people know what is going on in the world, like vaccinations are rolling out. Yes. Which means that a lot of people working from home, like us, especially, like, relatively younger people. We're yeah. not young, young, but yeah. We're yeah, we're not, like, you know, not 18 to 25. I'm like now 25 to 30. So, oh, yeah. Uh, gets me right there. But yeah, like, you know, we're, we're low on the priority list of vaccinations, which is fine. Yeah, you know, people who need them, like, you know, uh, people who are more at risk, which is that thing of the instant we put it out, oh, so you're going to be straight back to the office then and, like, think about it. Like, what world do you live in where you think we're going to be back to normal straight away? Mm-hmm. And it's like uh, since when we very first went into lockdown and um, we announced, like, as a, just a channel, just, oh, yeah, um, we're going to be recording remotely from now on and we're going to put, like, a little disclaimer at the top of the screen. Mm-hmm. Just the, because even to this day, we still have people thinking we're recording the videos in person. Yeah. Because, you know, we just sync up audio and it sounds like someone is off camera. It's like, no, we are, uh, every video, with the exception of a couple, where I'm wearing a mask, we're recorded mm-hmm. um, uh, remotely via Discord. Um, when we first announced that they were going to do that, there was like a not insignificant number of people. Why? Which I mean, more than one. Because I'm like, how yeah. the? Because f- uh, I'm baffled it was even a thing of reaching out to myself, you, Nisha, and then just like emailing the channel to say, "Look, um, I watch your videos for escapism. I don't want to be reminded of the pandemic while watching them. Mm-hmm. You need to not do this." It's like the fuck. Like we're living in it too. The fuck <laughs> else are we supposed to do? Do you want us to risk our lives? For your entertainment. And I know that, like, okay, yeah, there are some comments going, like, I don't like, like, disclaimer being up. And it's like, right, yeah, but I also get annoyed on the opposite end when I see a YouTube video being made where there's people interacting all together in an office. Yes. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck are you doing about this? Are you all just coming in and not giving a shit about lockdown? Because it looks like that, and you've made no other explanation of how you are actually approaching this COVID. Yeah. Or like, do you all live in the same house or something like that? But it's, uh, yeah, not we don't fun. know. But the fact that a lot of um, a lot of people aren't transparent about it really gets yeah. me annoyed because they could potentially be breaking the rules for making stupid YouTube videos. And even if they're not, um, the fact that you can look at it and think that they are, just it sends out a bad message. It's like, yeah. oh, if these people can annoy it, so can we. And it's been, it's been really amazing to see how salty people still are about that a year later, like um, in the, I made like a channel post saying, oh yeah, um, I'm back in the office now. Um, thanks to everyone who stuck with us for this. Um, videos will probably be, uh, the ones we're recording now probably going up in a month or two. Mm-hmm. Um, cheers to everyone who stuck with us, you know, during this like slight deviation from the original format. Also, fuck you to anyone not wearing a mask. Like a year <laughs> later, people are still mad about having to wear a mask. Like, How are you still salty about it? Mm-hmm. How do you still think it's something people are doing just to piss you off? Yeah, and it's it's so strange because like, just, as you say, it's been a whole year and some people still haven't gotten their heads around it and some people are still annoyed at the fact that we're seemingly just following the rules and I understand that, yeah, there is a deviation in quality but it's just a necessity of part of like this shit show of the past year. Yeah, like think about all this, the advice and I'm using like, advice, big air quotes. People on the video can see <laughs> this why people at home listening after the fact that they can't. Doing big old air quotes around that of the advice we got from people saying, oh, so we got a whole bunch of advice from people watching the channel uh, that was just fucking horrendous in nature and was actively like either heart- dangerous for us to do or just fucking impossible. Mm-hmm. Uh, for example, on your channel, we're playing through uh, Legend of Zelda, yeah, uh, Breath of the Wild, 
we got advice that when we when you announced, sorry, um, that we're going to stop that recording short because we don't want to record it remotely. We want to experience the end of the game together. Um, what was the advice you got, Lucas? I mean, a lot of the advice was either just go and play it with Carl, or it was to send Carl my fucking switch to let him finish it. In the post. In the post, yeah, my valuable and relatively fragile item that costs hundreds of quid, and it's like, yeah, just send it to Carl. All the, like, which is, that's the advice that's bad, but then the advice that was outright impossible was, why don't you just travel through and just go to Carl's house? Because yeah. that's illegal. That's you're against the fucking <laughs> So, oh no, but you're allowed to do it for work. It's like, if it's, if there's no other option. Yeah, there is that's, another option. that's the bit that they leave out, isn't it? it? Yeah, you're allowed to do it for business purposes if you can't operate as a business in another way. Yeah, and that's what we got in regards to um, uh, the channel. It's like, oh, well, you're all. This is your business. This is what you do for a living. Why can't people come to the office? Like, because we can record remotely, which is far safer. And also, I don't want Lucas and Nisha and stuff to risk their life to make fact videos. Yeah. <laughs> so you're saying it really but, is, and you could, but you couldn't explain that to people. No. It's and every time we try to, someone will get mad. So, mm. But why don't you do insert thing that's really fucking convoluted and stupid and would cost us a shit ton of money, time, or um, effort to do? And that's it, isn't yeah. it, really? I'm just because it would waste our time, effort, and money. Like It's uh, similar to like before lockdown, where I mentioned offhand, yeah, there's a series of videos I wanted to do for a while, and it would be me just teaching people the, the recipes I've mentioned offhand on the channel. Like, oh, you know, yeah. stuff like, you know, the correct way to make beans on toast, how I make a cup of tea, how to make cheese on a plate, which I mentioned in the video, how I make like, Carl's carbs, my takeaway, and just like dumb little things like that as um, just bonus content for my personal channel. Mm -hmm. And then I follow that up by saying, but we can't because I'm aware there's stories out there of people tracking down where YouTubers live based on reflections and just the general layout of their house. Yeah. And rather than look at that and go, man, that fucking sucks. It's a shame that that's something you actively have to plan for and think about mm -hmm. when trying to make content. They saw that and went, why don't you rent out another place to make those videos? <laughs> I forgot about that. I, I remember a couple of people being, we'll just cover up everything in your apartment. Which is, again, just another fucking ridiculous solution, which I'm not going to do for the sake of a joke video, but people yeah. are so mad that they're not going to get that video. So well, why don't you just do insert a get stupid ridiculous convoluted thing mm -hmm. like with the the green screen speaking yeah. of the green screen we talked about that a while ago didn't we a guy legit sent me a, a message of why don't you put your mattress against the wall I went, because i don't want to fucking move my mattress every time i film yeah. why not because it's where i sleep <laughs> i don't want to have and they, to physically alter my bedroom every day i wake up and need to record something and the guy couldn't understand why i wouldn't do that mm -hmm. and got mad when i told him to fuck off so, but all I'm telling you to do is move your entire bedroom around. I would. It's like, well, I'm not you. Then go make your videos and do that. Then <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so, and there's got to be. There's probably a word for it. It's, presumably, it's a German word to describe like that level <laughs> of just cluelessness. It's always but, a look, simul but simultaneously the confidence. I guess it's like it's close to mansplaining, isn't it? It's close to, yeah. But... Yeah, it's similar. It's the same kind of energy as mansplaining of um, I'm going to give you advice on something you do for a living despite having no um, uh, insider or expert knowledge on it. Yeah, and I like, when um, the amount of times that you get comments like that and you press people like, well, what, what's your experience with that? And it's like, well, I don't have any experience, but it was just advice. <laughs> Fuck off then, please. Uh, yeah, all, all the advice I get about lighting. And mm, yeah. um, I, I've had multiple people send me messages advising me on how to light the videos better. Mm. And for, you know, those videos are recorded in my bedroom. And it's not that we're limited by, you know, equipment. We have the equipment. Sorry, we're not limited by equipment, we're limited by space. Yeah. It's not equipment, it's not knowledge, it's space that limits us because there is like, you know, only so much space I have in my house available to record. But the amount of people, like, why don't you? Um, just get reflectors and put them on the, uh, all the different surfaces because I've got to live in my house as well. I have to live in my fucking house. Well, yeah, that, that's the thing, isn't it? It's not just space. It's also having a living space rather than just a fucking yeah. like office for a bedroom. And that's one of the reasons I really was like 
you know, excited to move my stuff back to the office. I didn't realize how just detrimental to my mental health it was to wake up and be confronted by my job the instant Literally. I woke up. Mm-hmm. So I got a guy here. Why is there soundproof- soundproofing foam in front of Carl? Because to proof the sound. Again, like, why else would like there be? Carl's sitting very close to a wall where the X, the noise would echo off it. All right, here, here's a pro tip. If you don't understand something, but it looks like it's there, it's like, presume it's there for a reason. I mean, all it, all it is is that Carl had a bit of echo and put soundproofing around his mic and went, oh, that helps the problem. It helps it just a little bit. Oddly enough, there's soundproofing behind me as well. There's soundproofing like behind where the microphone is because that's something that you have to do when you record content. There's soundproofing on top of the microphone as well, though. I've got this little thing here. I've got a little um, uh, pop filter on as well. Yeah. And people probably hear that, that really nice. Making ASMR now. I don't even know, like, anymore with the OBS settings that we've got, whether people will. Like, the, the Spotify version, mm-hmm. they probably will be able to, yeah. Not sure, because, like, OBS but, um... does all those, uh, those nice extra little filters automatically. Put. They do, but I just love that one, though. Why do you have soundproofing in front of you to absorb sound? <laughs> it exists for one purpose. Again, it's we got started one... this podcast saying how sensitive those Yeti microphones are, man. They are, but like, people could hear you from the other room. Hmm. No, it wasn't thinking you had a podcast. Because <laughs> yeah. I oh, heard yeah. that. Like, that, oh, that was I a separate hear... situation. Yeah. I thought I could hear Lucas from the other room, but it must have been like your headphones on the floor being picked up by a microphone. Yeah, my headphones were resting on the mic arm that I've got. Ah, uh, okay. So they must have been like speaking very quietly over to Carl. And that's something that sometimes my headphones will pick up the sound of my headphones with your audio. So yeah. every now and again, if you listen to the podcast, you might hear Lucas like being doubled. That's because it's the sound of him over my headphones being picked up by my microphone. That's and how fucking sensitive these microphones are. Yeah, and that's the thing is like we, we could replace them for slightly Even better more expensive quality, one. but it's going to be hundreds of quid for a mic to improve the quality slightly. Yeah, and it's like you know what? I'm not spending that money. That I might do at some point when I've got the spare money to throw around, mm-hmm. but there's other things I need to improve, like my general office equipment and my desk and things first. Like it's not the priority. Yeah, I've got things that are um, uh, higher up on the list than buying a new microphone to replace the already very expensive microphone I bought a year ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, oh. speaking of which, like I did see yeah. online, there's like these desks that some people have been getting, and okay. uh, not just stand up desks, but like stand up electronically controlled stand up desks. So. The entire desk rises up when you just press like a little button on the control panel. Do you know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like something that's going to fucking break in a year. Yeah, and becomes useless because it's, you know if something like that breaks, it's not going to break when it's fully extended. It's mm. going to break when it's halfway up. So it's <laughs> an awkward angle that you can never use. But man, like I, I, you know, I'm not going to spend that amount of money on desks as a quid. But mm. yeah, I would love that shit of just you know what you get get a stand up desk and even then. The, there's no effort involved as well. It's not like you've got to grab it and like yank it up and all that shit. Yeah, I still have people thinking that I use a stand up desk and I just sit up straight. Yeah, it's, it's baffling to think. Like, no, I think I, as I well, just... it might be like the the camera angle that you're at because yeah, I do I do have a chair. If people can see it. It's just I have like you know I don't have a headrest because who the fuck uses a headrest on a chair? Hell yeah, just, just sit right up straight. Here, baby. I'm too tall to have a headrest anyway. Well, last Every thing time is I'm like down. over half foot smaller than you, so I sit at a reasonable level on this chair where it mm. actually helps me, you'd be like right up there. Yeah, even the prop I've got proper big office chairs at the office and whenever I sit in them like the top of my head goes off the back of them. Yeah. So when I sit in cars, when I sit in cars, my head always hits the back of the headrest. Mm. And I'm always terrified if we crash a car because I'm gonna fucking my head's gonna fly off. Well your neck had like proper whiplash back, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well I'm gonna sit on um, uh, roller coasters and stuff. Oh god and I just see it and the thing doesn't come all the way down like oh god I hate this. <laughs> If this thing crashes, I'm fucking done. I'm flying straight out. That's a lot. That's that's one thing that, like, obviously, it, the common thing, especially with men, is I want to be taller. And a lot of the time, like, tall people don't point out that being tall is a pain in the ass a lot of the time. Because nothing is designed for someone who's, like, uh, taller than the average, whereas someone who's smaller than the average, they can always use stuff that's um, designed for someone taller. Yeah, it's a lot like... harder to use something designed for someone smaller than you are. Mm-hmm. And I'm like five seven, so a little bit below average height, but mm-hmm. that just means that I never have to deal with like, oh, this thing's too fucking like small for me. And it's like, yeah, yeah I... it feels the most things feel designed for people around my height. Yeah, like for example, even something like a phone, like this, like it, 
my entire hand fits around the phone. So mm-hmm. it's awkward to hold. Uh, it's designed to be held in a really specific way and I can't hold it. And like uh, controllers for, like, you know, I play with a fucking Joy-Con specifically because <laughs> it looks really funny. Yeah. Uh, and like baths, beds, my feet dangle off the edge of my bed because it's impossible to get a mattress that is um, made for someone my size unless I get the next size up in mattress, like an emperor mattress, which is like too wide for my purposes. Mm. You can't get longer mattresses. It's like stuff like getting jeans. Yeah. If I get jeans that fit, I'm quite thin as well. So if I try and get jeans with like longer legs, they always have like fucking wider waist. It's like, no, or t-shirts, especially awkward. Mm. Because every medium t-shirt that I get is either too short or too long, or the arms are fucking massive and they pop out here. And like, <laughs> I've got fucking um, uh, like clothes hanger still in there. God, must be great. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like, um, uh, like you can, like someone's made a point here, like um, uh, trousers are the worst. Mm. So yeah, if, if it's too long, like you can always like, you know, you can like, you, you do your roll-ups, like you do your 80s roll-up tech. If it's too short, you can't add length to it. Yeah, yeah. And I have that That's problem with like a lot of my jeans. Of I have very short legs, so when I get jeans, a lot of the time at the bottom, I just have to like scrunch them up at the bottom. It's like, oh, <laughs> just no. those turn ups. Oh, I, 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 I refuse the turn ups because I had to. I used to do that in high school and a little back and go. That is even worse than like just them being completely scrunched at the bottom of your shoes. Yeah. Have you ever seen though? Like it's now fashion. Oh, it's, they're trying to make it fashion of the exaggerated turn ups. And you're getting turn up, turn-ups. exaggerated. So you're getting turn ups that are like like four or five inches in, in length. Oh my god! Like the exaggerated turn ups, man. I see that and I go, fashion is no uh, fashion. Just left. It's well, left me in the, the dust. The thing is, uh, you know, it generation to generation. I think everyone just looks that way. Of like, old, generation yeah. older than us is going. Why the fuck are people wearing skinny jeans? Like. What the hell? And then we go, no, skinny jeans are stylish. And then yeah. the gen, like the Gen Zers are all like, well, no, skinny jeans are stupid. Why are they all wearing yeah, skinny and they're jeans? they're all wearing like super baggy jeans. I'm waiting for Jinko yeah. jeans to come back, but uh, never forget <laughs> um, when skinny jeans were first introduced, um, fashion magazines ripped them apart because they were first introduced on a catwalk. Oh, okay. So um, like, uh, and this is one of the things I learned like, when I was writing an article about it. It's like, mm. why is um, like catwalk fashion so just flamboyant? Mm-hmm. It's like, that was something I was genuinely interested in so I picked that article to write because that was one of the suggested topics and I was like yeah why the fuck do you look at like catwalks and they look ridiculous mm. and part of it is it's um, it's free advertising basically because if you want to pay for an advertising campaign for an upcoming clothing line or a specific company that's going to cost you a fortune you make one of your models wear a stupid outfit that's going to get free column inches all day uh, okay. so it's, it's far cheaper than to like, just have one catwalk model wear one stupid outfit than pay for an entire um, uh, advertising campaign. Also, they're deliberately exaggerated, but they'll be toned down later for actual, like, you know, um, wearable fashion. Yeah. And that was an example used for, like, skinny jeans, where they had models on the catwalk wearing, like, ultra, ultra skinny, like, spray-on skinny jeans. Yeah. And then they toned them down for the next part of fashion. But then it's weird to think that now spray-on skin, they eventually became a thing anyway. They did, yeah. And, but they were widely mocked at the time. And like they were like, look at these stupid fucking clothes worn by these idiot models. I get with like paint on skinny jeans why some people would look at that and go, that's ridiculous. But mm. generally speaking, like most skinny jeans are just, they feel like quite well fitted. They're not like stuck to your legs or anything like that. And yeah, I always wear skinny jeans. You can confirm I've never not, I always wear skinny jeans. Like, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can confirm that. And I for do the squats. most part, like I wear either skinny jeans or like, skinnier jeans still uh, ripped skinnier jeans and stuff like that I, I tend to prefer like the fitted feel of them yeah because i still remember like getting that off someone like uh the, the classic thing of like the why do you wear skinny jeans and i just looked at like, this older guy because like, i do squats <laughs> so, i do squats it's like same as like oh why do you wear like fitted clothing because i want my clothes to fit nicely yeah. why would i not want my clothes to feel like they fit and they were made for me Like, but yeah it's one of those things isn't it of like um just every generation trying to get away from the last by radically changing fashion and i know that like gen z as well for women it's like oh no uh like bangs and side fringes and stuff yes. but it's all about curtains now that's the thing though it's um the Big easiest pops. it's one of the easiest ways to rebel mm-hmm. is via our clothing yeah because it's like you know it's like clothing for the most part is disposable and very easy to change like it's not, say, something like a tattoo or a piercing. Like You can put on just like wildly flamboyant clothing as a way to rebel, but you can always take it off. Mm-hmm. 
And it is, it is interesting to see, like, um, just I am now at that age where I'm an old man, it, like, you know, in terms of fashion. Mm. And I, like, when I went out today, went out for a walk, and just the amount of people I'm seeing wearing this, it's like, I fucking won't be caught dead in that. <laughs> yeah. I won't be caught dead walking around. And then I think to myself, like, the shit I must have worn when I was that age, people say the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, it goes in roundabouts. It does, yeah. And I just find it so funny to, like, sit in this situation and go, oh, there is a generation younger than us, like, changing their fashion style now. Yeah, like they're defining what culture is now. It's not; it's they no are, longer in our hands. But it's just really funny to think, like, well, I'm not mad about that. I know plenty of people a generation older than me that were super, of course, super yeah. mad about the way I dressed. The fact we even have that level of self-awareness about it shows more growth. It does, yeah. But, but in that vein, Lucas, what is like a item of clothing or a style of clothing or something like you know, that was fashionable when we were younger that you're glad is dead and it should never make a comeback? Um, because I'm just going to go straight out there and say dropped crotch jeans. Oh, yeah. Do you remember the dropped crotch jeans that made it like you're wearing a nappy or you've shit yourself? I'm bad. glad they're dead. Yeah. I fucking hate her then. They piss me off to like to know when every time I saw someone wearing them. <laughs> or the beanies where they had the bobble on top because the beanies that didn't fit. Yeah. Because they made it an absolute arse ache to find a beanie to fit. Yeah. And I, I don't actually like beanies that are fully just like squeezed onto your head with I no don't. no like um movement in them at all but mm-hmm. yeah i actually speaking of beanies that's one thing i do think looks really stupid like you know like, the really like short beanies with the, oh, the, uh, the fisherman beanies is that what it fisherman beanies yeah because it's I, what fisherman used to wear yeah i just as a, as a fisherman wear them all you want as a fashion item i think they look fucking ridiculous the ones that roll up over your ears you mean yeah 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 they look stupid and it's just like, it looks again, like half a hat is on your head. Yeah. And again, it's making it super annoying to try and find hats. <laughs> yeah. Because I just like to wear like a classic standard beanie. And I know every time I wear that in a video, I'll get a comment on that video saying that you do not suit that hat. And it's like, it's not about suiting the hat. It's the fact I've got long fucking hair and I'm trying to keep it out of my eyes. Because mm. I, I can show this off like, again for the video watchers. Like, look. Yeah. I, I cut my hair, but I'm not going to cut the fringe because I know I've seen too many videos of girls who cut their fringe. Have you ever seen the ones where they do this and they cut it and then they let go, realize that they, because they were looking down, they've pulled it too far down and yeah. it goes up and it's just like, and they just have like the, the face drop as they realize, oh God, I just fucked up my hair. Yeah. And that was literally like, you know, the trouble experience I had today cutting my own hair. And um, I was there in the mirror, like, come on, like, you can't on. fuck this up at all. And my, my fringe when I was like pulling it down was again about yeah. like right in the middle of my eyes and, just like sitting there, go, and I cut it slightly shorter than I would have liked, but it still looks as good as when I've come out of the fucking barbers and they've done the opposite of what I fucking asked them to. So I yes. don't care. But it's that thing of like when I, when I just see it, I go, oh, you don't suit that hat, can't. Like, I just one, fuck you. Mm. Two, like what else am I supposed to do? We've like again that thing of like people giving us shit in videos. I, well, I guess it's just me they're giving the shit because I'm the only one who's visible. Of um, oh you look a bit dishevelled or your hair looks crap or you look like you know s- s- just anything that's not like you know deviating from the norms or you're not looking very well. It's like, what reality do you live in? Do you think I'm not experiencing the same things you are in lockdown? Yeah, and like we're all having a shit time and the you know one hour or fifteen minutes or ten hours you see us on a screen every week. Oh. That is a small glimpse into our life. It's not all of our life. Like not long ago, I just, I just sat down in the middle of the day and like my kitchen and was just like, I'm fucking done. I, 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 I'm, I just had a moment where I was like, this has just got to me too fucking much. And like oh, people man. don't see that on a on a Twitch. No, yeah, of course. You know and what? you wouldn't want to stream if you were in that mood. But I, I have I had that moment like. Um, uh, it just Joe, just sometimes when you just stand and you just find yourself and you realize you've been stood there for like 40 minutes, you're like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. I have that all the time, yeah. yeah. And it's just like everyone's having a shit time. You don't need to comment on a video to make us feel even fucking worse about ourselves. Yeah. But it is fascinating in that way of like what world or what reality do they think we live in? Because like clearly you know how the world's working because you, you exist in it. Why do you think we, like a YouTuber, should be held to a higher standard or that they're not experiencing the same things as you are? And I'd love to like pick someone's brains about that. But it's like um obviously I'm not referring to us as one, but it's like mm-hmm. quote unquote like celebrity culture and 
I think a lot of people have that like idea in their head of YouTubers and Twitch streamers being like uh, like pseudo celebrity kind of status. And Maybe I, yeah. I don't think that at all, and I'm not trying to put that upon us, as I said. But a lot of the time, it is just yeah. Well, let's bash these like famous people to make ourselves feel better. And like you said, maybe you see it a lot with, as I say, like celebrities and just bringing them down for, for what reason? Like not having makeup on that day. It's like, oh, they're wearing um, uh, loose fitting clothing. It's like, oh, they didn't have a chance to put the makeup on this morning. It's like, they're, they're going for a fucking coffee run. Yeah, you ambushed them in a fucking car park for Starbucks while they were making a five minute coffee run to go back home. Like, leave them be. Then again, though, you also have the ones where like celebrities and stuff get caught out. Not expecting it, and it actually endears you them more. Like the one of Ben Affleck, where did you see where he dropped his Dunkin' Donuts order? Did you see that? See like, it, no. no, like a, a paparazzo got a photo of him just outside his house picking up a Dunkin' Donuts order that had been left outside his house, and he yeah. dropped it. And it's just they get the image, but they got the exact moment that he fell over, and then it's got like you see his face, and he's just oh. just do that thing that he's not even going down to reach to grab it because he knows. Yeah, yeah. Like he he knows he knows it's gone, but he's just got to watch it happen. He's just there, like, okay. he's just, yeah. Do you know what Ben Affleck? We've all fucking been. <laughs> we have. I uh, I did see like not long ago, uh, just perusing through Reddit, uh, just, yeah. like a video of a pizza delivery guy like putting it on the side to knock on the door. And then as he reaches, it starts to fall, but then he like he catches the pizza half in midair and he's like fisting it back into the box. Like, no, no, no. It's like, oh, but it is done, mate. <laughs> but you've got to respect him for trying. It's like <laughs> that legendary gif of that little girl trying to do the Coke and, uh, the Coke and Mentos thing. Oh, and yeah. she tries to put the lid back on, put the Coke, just... And then you see, the fact she's still trying is adorable because yeah. you're not getting that lid on. Oh, God. And I absolutely oh. love it. Like, just, you've got to just accept it. It's, it's just happening. It's like, um, uh, I'm a really big fan of accidental renaissance or modern renaissance. Um, uh, like it's two different subreddits, but basically it's just it's just photos of just people in random situations where they accidentally like renaissance photos. And my favorite oh. is the hung over, not the, the drunk woman on a, a subway, and she's like passed out like that, and she's got a pizza that's all on the floor. <laughs> and people have done it and like put it in like a proper classical art style. Oh. <laughs> And it's just the accidental, it's just, uh, or people have got um, like a photo of Lindsay Lohan mm. passed out after a drug binge. And it's like, she has the exact same look on her face as like a fucking uh, like uh, old Italian masters um, painting. <laughs> and it's oh, like, oh, good. so fucking good. I've not heard of that one. But well, like accidental out. Renaissance is really good. It's like um, uh, accidental like Fibonacci. Or whatever it is, it's like where um, people look and they put like, the, the Fibonacci spiral over something to show. It. Oh, it's it's um, uh, it's perfect mm-hmm. from like you know a ratio perspective. And they always get like the the Fibonacci bear, where it's a bear that's super round and it perfectly fits. <laughs> the fucking... it's, it's so good. Oh, excellent! People taking modern life and be like, yeah, um, it's actually it's super artwork. Yeah, uh, this is modern art right here. It is. And it's just it's so fucking funny. It cracks me up every time when I see shit like that. The round bear. <laughs> There's no bear that was fucking perfectly round bears, but just pe- like people just not having a good time, but they have a photo taken at the exact moment it happens. Like it's mm. just it's so fucking relatable. Like that one yeah. of like the woman who's passed out with just a pizza on it. It's like oh, you see it and you're like, oh, it gets you right there in the soul, doesn't it? We've all had just that one moment in life, haven't we? It's only you're walking um, home, not walking home, when you're walking about after a night out, mm-hmm. like a Friday or a Saturday or something like that, and you just look on the floor and you see an entire kebab just turned oh. upside down the floor, and you just go, someone had a rough night. Well, I had that moment like a few years back, and um, okay. I was surprising Jenna with like a massive Costco cake. Oh, and, no. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, so I like, managed to go out and like get somebody with a Costco card to come with us and help get the cake and everything. Yeah. And got it back up. So like a flap and we had friends around and such and um I got it through the door and then everyone was like, Oh my god, I'm like really surprised you haven't dropped that and as I was putting it on the table it went <laughs> no, no. There's nothing you can do, is there? <laughs> 
There's just no saving it. It was just that moment of like, I can't believe you haven't dropped it. Oh yeah, I know it's great. Oh god, no. And it's like you look at it and you go, "There's no foot." It'd be, it'd be sadder if I tried to pick it up. Well, like the thing is, you know, it it was still cake. It's fine. Just like the design on the top got a bit smushed and stuff. But oh, man. it's more the feeling of dropping it than the yeah. actual like uh, the cake stayed in the box and it was all fine. It didn't get uh, dirtied or anything. But it's like, man, I just. I was so close to success. Yeah, it's like I've told you before, haven't I? The, the guy I saw who had like one of those crates of beer that has like 30 bottles of beer in it, and he was getting to his car and he just dropped it on the floor in the car park. And I just like locked eyes with him and, went, and he just got in his car and drove off. He looked at him and was like, it's not even worth getting one out. He just drove <laughs> off and left it. I had like half of my bottles of cider smashed from me once when. We walked all the way back from Asda, like 20, 25 minute walk, and mm-hmm. got to the front door, and the handles on the bag snapped off, and it was like, I was like, oh, and I just like knelt down at the doorstep, like, oh, oh, and then like Jenna just looks in the bag, he's like, a couple of them are still not broken. Yeah. Okay. Have you ever had though, um, like shampoo explode in a bag? Yeah, in my suitcase on holiday. On, oh no, not on holiday. Yeah. At least. Was it on your way there as well? On the way there. Oh, no. It's at least on the way back. You took it on the wash. Oh, that's the worst. I had to just put everything in the bath and spray it down with the shower. Oh, man. Uh, I still remember that I went to when I went to Dubai a couple of years ago. Hmm. And the guy I went with, just China Airways or China Airlines, just lost his fucking bag. And he was really pissed off because it's Dubai and Dubai's fucking hot. Mm, yeah. And he only had the clothes he'd been in. It's a 40 hour flight he took. So he had like a carry-on bag with like, you know, some stuff in it, but it's like they lost his bag. And he's like, I've been wearing the same clothes for four fucking days in Dubai. And I remember though when he called him up and he's like, I'm gonna get my fucking money back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And he called him up and he, compl- he got finally got through to someone who spoke English. He speaks Chinese, but not good enough to yell. By oh, the way, he says yeah. it, I, I speak Chinese, but uh, when I get angry, I can't formulate my words better. So I want to speak to someone. He finally got to talk to someone in English. Then, don't worry, sir. And we'll pay to get you a new bag. How much did your bag cost? And my bag cost six hundred pounds. <laughs> and they're like, "What?" I'm like, yeah, it cost six hundred pounds. I want a new bag. And they're like, "Okay, yeah, sure. We'll send you a voucher to get a new bag for six hundred pounds." Can you send a receipt? Like, yes, I can. I'll buy a new one, and then you can get send me. You can reimburse me. Right? Like, uh, uh, okay, sir. Okay. So he just went to like a fucking <laughs> a store in Dubai and got the most expensive suitcase he could find. Oh, that's <sighs> great. And just ended up getting like that. And then he went to a shop and just bought a shit ton of new clothes from Dubai, like top whack prices, and made him pay for them all. Fair enough, like, no, yeah. fuck you. But just that thing, though, my bag cost £600. And I was there, like, no, it didn't. Like, no, it <laughs> like, didn't. It's like fucking bringing a Gucci bag on holiday, mate. When you go to Dubai, it's expected. Like, a lot yeah. of people there do have very expensive yeah. stuff. And that's why, like, he said, while well, I'm in Dubai, how expensive do you think? And they went, oh, yeah, fuck, we've lost a really expensive bag. Because like, you knew they're not going to find it. No, no. But, oh wow, well, that was just, <laughs> that was the holiday. <laughs> like we nearly got arrested because he nearly killed a fucking sheikh. Because you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to fly drones in certain parts of Dubai, and he didn't know this. And he was just flying a drone out of the per- way where we were staying the window. Just yeah. like we just I remember that we opened the window and he just got his drone Whoa, and he flew it straight out the window, not realizing <laughs> and shit himself, thinking, "Oh, my drone's going to because it's a drone; it's safe flying." Yeah, and we we're like, "Oh, it stays floating." So he floated his drone around a bit, and then there's a knock on the door like five minutes later. The fuck is that? And it was just like a member of the like fucking Dubai either police force, or they think they have like people who basically just like don't do this mm-hmm. people. And they'll be like, Are you flying a drone? Yes, do not fly a drone. That's protected airspace. What do you mean? The Sheikh has like said that this is where he flies his helicopter sometimes. <laughs> So if yeah. the shakes flies helicopter, you're not fucking. No one else is allowed to go. Like, oh god, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Man. <laughs> oh, and that's just... thing in Dubai, I can fucking believe that 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 would be a thing. Just oh yeah, one of the shakes just like flies his airplane past it. Uh, flies his helicopter past here. Yeah, and you can sometimes see him out the window. Yeah, like, he sometimes just flies past and he flies his own helicopter. Of course. But just that fucking just just when his drone flew out the window because <laughs> we thought it'd gone because when you see it just fly out the window you think that's gone but obviously it's drone so it floated but we shit ourselves we thought we just flown a drone out like ten stories are gonna hit someone <laughs> oh it was awful I absolutely love all those videos of the the drone's perspective 
of drone owners trying to rescue the drones from disaster. <laughs> They're great. Do you see that one where it was like an Amazon drone? <laughs> And someone just threw a fucking brick at it. <laughs> <laughs> they caught it on the camera. Oh. oh. <laughs> Those videos are incredible. Like, where you see it and you see the person like the one the famous one, the one in the lake, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and the, the guy one. like jumps into the lake to get it. Just wading through the water. Like, oh, to, oh. <laughs> to try and get it before it lands in the lake. Yeah. Oh, my other favorite drone videos are the ones of people getting drones on Christmas Day. It's a very specific genre of video, and it is. <laughs> Guys who are there with a girlfriend who doesn't give a shit. Mm, yeah. Filming either on Christmas morning or Boxing Day. And it's a brand new drone. You can always see it's like, you know, really snowy about. And it's being filmed by the girlfriend who's presumably like wearing like they're just their pyjamas and they're really annoyed. <laughs> and just this one, and I, it pisses me off that I'm not be able to find it, but just the drone's flying, it goes really high, and you hear the, the woman's voice off camera. Well, that's going pretty high, isn't it? And the guy's like, yeah, it's got a really good range. She goes, What's the range on that thing? He's like, I don't know. Goes, Are you going to bring it back? And he goes, it's not responding anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and he just keep going. And he just flies. And the camera just zooms in. But it's like you know that that's like four or $500 just gone. Yeah. <laughs> that's just fucking gone. But it's just that you see it flying. It just keeps going. It just keeps going. And it's like, oh, are you going to bring it back? I can't. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, no. Uh, it's just so fucking funny. It's like all those videos of people with, like, brand new um, uh, remote control airplanes. Yeah. And, you know, and the, again, it's a very specific genre of video, and it's someone in a field on a really grainy camera, like, from, like, fight, and you know they drove all the way out there, and it's like they're there with their kids or their missus, and they don't want to be there. And, you know, the entire trip, that's, trust me, it'll be worth it when we see it fly. And you'll see it go, <laughs> <It's just laughs> instantly. <laughs> or like eagles attacking them or something. It always like they always pivot into the ground at like Mach three, don't they? <laughs> just, oh, just <laughs> they always do that thing because then the propeller will get caught on a, a reed or some grass, and it'll flip it over and it'll snap the wing. <laughs> yeah. It's such a specific genre of it, but it cracks me up every time I see them. I love it's like people dropping iPhones. Yeah. I do like people taking selfies, and it's like you see the cat, and the, they just fly, fall on the floor. And um, just being like the the ones where it's like the kids are filming themselves, like messing about with the phone, and then drop it in like the toilet or something, and you just watch their face, like, oh, <gasps> oh no, what have I done? I like that one. This is another great one. If people out there can find it, I really, really um uh, recommend they do it. It's uh, someone filming. Um, like football chants or maybe at a stadium with a mm. band and everyone's going way, way, way like throwing their hands forward and you just see a guy and his phone's in his hand filming it and someone slaps his hand and the phone's going Whoa! like 80 fucking rows down he's not finding that I, um, I I don't even remember if like we filmed it or in my head I can just re remember it that well but just <laughs> going to like a local football match around here and uh, like this was like years back now, but we went and our mate had been pestering us to all just go because he was like, "Look, okay. it's just a local football club. Like it costs like eight quid to get in, okay. and we can all just go grab a beer and have a laugh." Eventually, we all gave in and was like, "We'll do it this this one time, okay?" This we'll one go. time. And then the guy was sat directly in front of somebody else that had brought a drum to bang on the entire match. And it just in my head, all I can see is like me looking to my right and like panning over and just seeing his face as if oh. Because it's the person in front of him just has the drum the entire time. And yeah. it's just like the drum was like essentially at the back of his head and just like doof 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 and it like he was just dead inside. And it was just the entire uh, match. The entire match, yeah. It's like uh, when I went to a, I was in America and I went to a, uh, a hockey game, I think it was. And there was just a guy in front who completely painted his face with the team's colours. And he was massively overweight. And all he did the entire time was scream and bang on the plastic. Oh, God, no. And you're not supposed to bang on the plastic, but this guy very clearly had, like, um, uh, seats because every time a security guard came over, he just yelled at them and they walked away. Oh. Yeah. 
And that was the entire game. Just, and the thing as well, because like there was a few seats empty, he would just keep walking up and down the seats. Oh, no. Screaming and trying to get, tell everyone to get up on their feet and stuff like that if they weren't cheering. So he's like, no, you're not cheering. Like, it's like... Okay. Yeah. All right. I guess this is how it's going to be. So... But just that, that one, I can see that, yeah. The people who took a fucking drum. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I, I understand you want to enjoy your watching experience, but so do the other 50 people right next to you. Like, in your peripheral, yes. Yeah. Now, he's alright to like, do it a little bit, maybe, but just the entire fucking game. But can you imagine, like, going to one of those football matches when it was, like, the Boo Boo Zaylers? Oh, I kind of wish that I had. <laughs> just so I can know I've experienced what purgatory feels like. Because that's what I imagine purgatory is. Just like because purgatory is like you know it's it's not supposed to just be awful. It's just this constant nothingness. Mm. I want that. Like, I want like, that's what purgatory probably is to me. It's a football match with Vuvuzelas. If anyone doesn't know what a Vuvuzela are, like they're just a loud like horn. But yes. in the one of the World Cups, I think it was like the South Africa World Cup. They were mm -hmm. like the official like. Instrument. item to bring into the arena for some god knows reason it's, uh, the inventor of the vuvuzela is south african ah okay and uh, they thought oh well, let's promote south african culture by giving everyone vuvuzelas and then the entire 90 minutes experience was just <laughs> to the point where you could hear it over the commentary <laughs> And it was that thing where they started banning them for like i think it was every other football stadium in the world banned them in the yeah. aftermath of um, uh, the World Cup, because it was so fucking bad. But I remember watching just a game, and all you heard was, <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? We thought his TV was Brock. And so we realised. <laughs> it was fucking incredible. Like, if it's that loud, viewing it at home, and like, yeah, as you yeah. say, we go over the commentary and everything, I can't imagine sitting in the middle of that. Just like, <laughs> Just for 90 minutes, so then you know... It's longer than 90 minutes. Be so extra there's the, time. Yeah, there's the entire lead-up to the match, and then there's like afterwards trying to get out. Mm. It was incredible. And I love it as I think the guy who invented the Vuvuzela like, was really mad, because like, oh, they don't. it's a beautiful instrument, and it makes such a wonderful sound. It's like, no, it fucking doesn't, mate. It's awful. <laughs> it just makes the one note as well. It's great, I love it. Or at least the ones in the World Cup did. I still remember, though, they were giving them out for free with like cans of Coke and stuff. Yeah. And uh, we had them, like, we'd watch World Cup matches at people's houses. Like, one guy brought a Vuvuzela and he immediately said, get out. So if yeah. you blow on it once, you're getting out. We don't want it. Yeah, the thing that happened with, like, one of my cousins, he was just, like, a few years younger than me and just, like, oh, yeah, this, this is cool, isn't it? And just did it once and every adult just, like, stopped talking and looks. It's like, no. It's like, you can do no. that once. <laughs> yeah. Do it when we score a goal and that's it. Yeah, basically. I would love to do that. I just want to, I just want just to experience it. I don't know what's worse, like the Vuvuzelas or the weird, like, Eon clackers that they have, like, the two giant just air tubes of plastic, like... I think the Vuvuzelas worse, especially in, like, a post-COVID world. Oh, God, yeah. Where you just think it's basically people just blowing fucking virus and diseases <laughs> into the air. I, I, I do like the clackers, though, because they distract your view as well. Yeah, they do. They get right in the way of everyone. Uh, it's like um, when you go out on St. Paddy's Day, isn't it? And it's like those awful fucking giant um, Guinness hats that I never see anybody selling, but I see everybody wearing. That might be... I remember one of my mates getting in a bar. Like, a lot of the time they give them out as like drinking challenges. Like, okay. Prizes for drinking challenges. I don't think they sell them. I think it's like, oh, uh, down five Guinness and you get a Guinness hat. And then you see someone wearing it the entire fucking night. Mm-hmm. Are their pride and joy because they can drink Guinness. Like, and I've, I have legit seen people have fist fights over those things. Oh. Because obviously, it's never wear a hat in a nightclub. No. I'm just going to put that as a pro tip for anyone out there who's not been to a nightclub yet or is thinking of going to one after all that. Never, ever wear a hat in a nightclub unless you are prepared for someone to snatch it off your head and then never give it back or start a fight with you when you ask for your clothes back. And I like, you know. I have quite a lot of trilbies and they're like nicer mm -hmm. ones. And I made the mistake of wearing one with like my nice shirt and waistcoat out to a nightclub once and spent the entire night just experiencing that. I have people running up, 
grabbing my hand and thinking it's fucking hilarious. And then I'm like, okay, that's the next 20 minutes getting it back off. This guy, I'll put it back on my head and then another person's going to take it off my head. It was it was an awful night. Yeah, never, ever wear a hat to a nightclub. Unless you don't give a shit about the hat getting off. Yeah. It will. I think I've it's had that quite a bit with like... Um, when we've done like fancy dress nights out as well, and like the yeah, if it's Felix like, night, all that cat, shit. you can literally see it. Any anyway, Twitch viewers can see it hanging on my little lightsaber there. But That's like, the um, just spent the entire night as well. Like, I'm just gonna not wear the hat because, because it's just gonna get snatched off your head. I just held it in my hands and danced with it in my hands. Yeah, because someone's going to snatch it off your head, and then you're not getting it back. Yeah, and the person will get aggressive when you say, "Can I have my outfit? Can I have my clothes back?" And it's like they what. Really? Well, it's just the yeah. hat, mate. It's like the hat that I fucking paid for. Yeah. yeah. I'll still, though, um, uh, like when that happened to, um, uh, I think, a mate of mine. I think I want to say it was the same guy I went to Dubai with, but like someone just snatched a hat off his head. So he just walked up and just fucking took the pint. <laughs> he, just took, he just took the pint and downed it off them. And the person was like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, he just didn't look. Just straight up. Just like they took it off his head as he walked over and just grabbed the pint out of the hand and walked off. And they brought his hat back later to him. He's like, that's okay. <laughs> because he's the guy who told me, like, it's, again, it's one of those moments I want to be there just to, to see what happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, he used to do judo. And um, his judo instructor was one of the people who trained the English judo squad. Oh, right. And he okay, trained yeah. with basically the Olympic judo squad for the UK. Mm-hmm. Uh, for, for England, sorry. And um, he was, went to a pub one evening and they were all wearing their jackets because they'd all been training. So they all went out for a drink afterwards. And um, there was just a group of lads nearby and one of them was just giving them guff for all wearing the same jackets. So, oh, what are you doing with the same jackets? And you know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And just making just various homophobic slurs to them. And the instructor, um, just what, when he was getting a pint, like so he left his jacket on the back of his chair. Like, someone was, like asked, like the guy grabbed his arm Bad idea, he's on the pint, <laughs> just drags him down. And um, my mate told me, he said he's always saw his instructor do was just lean down, whisper in the guy's ear, point towards their table, and then walk away. And the guy left the pub like 30 seconds later. <laughs> and what he said is, um, uh, just something along the lines of they're asking, oh, what, what the fuck's written on the why one of those like shitty jackets? And he just said, Read the back of one. And the guy like walked, stood up, looked, and saw, Oh, Olympic judo squad, and just left. And it's like, Yeah. Don't want to deal with this. I mean, I yeah. think still one of my favorite stories is those. Uh, that was it like wrestlers or pro fighters or whatever that uh, they're like black belts who got attacked for uh, cross dressing during a stag do. Yeah, and they oh oh, it turns out yeah, we're all like international champions and black belts, and we just get yep. the shit out of them. It was like five MMA fighters on a stag do, and someone <laughs> like um, decided to give them shit for dress being dressed like women. Yeah. So there was another one where uh, a story in America where a guy tried to carjack a van, not realizing that the van was carrying um, uh, just award-winning black belt um, karate masters on their way to a tournament. So he kidnapped the van, told everyone to get out at like knife point, and it's like you're asking six fucking black belts. Yeah, yeah, great, good it's idea, mate. Like they look back at him, it's like this is a bad idea, mate. <laughs> this is not going to go you, well. You basically just try to hijack the van driven by the Ninja Turtles. What are you doing? I'll you fucking fool. Cool. I do want to see that. But I, mean, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that moment just to see the look on the guy's face when he realised he's been giving shit to um, uh, like the entire Olympic judo squad. Yeah. Just why would you do it? Like, why? Like, clearly, though, if a bunch of people walk in where, like, to wherever you are, a bar or whatever it is, and are all wearing the exact same jacket or outfit, you know yes. they're probably part of some fucking club. Probably part of a club, yeah. Like, they're not all just wearing the same jacket because it's a nice jacket. That'd be cool, though. <laughs> I feel that'd be a good night out. All go out wearing the same outfit. Like, if they're all wearing a jacket just for the sake of it, they're probably in a fucking gang. <laughs> like, they're in a 50s gang. Yeah, it's like, it's like they, you, you just try to pick on either the Jets or the Sharks. Or the T-Birds. Do not mess. Oh man, no, no, don't mess with them. Uh, speaking of which, though, like speaking of all wearing the same outfit and football, uh, have you ever seen that great clip of when an entire football team dyed their hair white for a bet? No. Like they lost a bet or something like that, and then you the commentary for it. No, 
because you have an entire squad of people with the same haircut bright white hair and it's like that you can hear the commentator not knowing who they are <laughs> because it's just everyone on the squad wearing the exact same outfit and like yeah. they're all wearing the same shirt and they've all got the same haircut and they can't tell the difference between them oh man that's incredible it was incredible i i thought it was so fucking funny <laughs> yeah especially with footballers it's really easy to identify them from like the numbers on the back of their shirts and the ridiculous like fucking haircuts they have yeah and this is like you know but all those American people out there. Not American football, we all know they wear helmets. Yeah, uh, but soccer. Yeah. I just, that's just a good one. That's a good video out there. Someone's going to go watch that one. Just they all walk out when there's that same outfit. <laughs> it's like that, uh, that Trigger Happy TV sketch where he, dressed, he gets uh, like 20 people all to dress like um, Palace Guards, do you know, include with the big bearskin oh, hats. Yeah. And he buys an entire row of cinema tickets seats oh, no. and they all <laughs> sit in a row and that clip is amazing to go see because you see people sat behind them just stand up and leave as they realize it's the entire crowd because <laughs> like, it's a mostly full cinema the film's about to start and then the entire row comes in oh. wearing that because they book out the entire row it's yeah. so fucking good oh god and then what do you do because like like Okay, if there's one guy with a big ridiculous hat on, it's like, take that fucking hat off. You're going to turn around to an entire row of people, like, take these hats off. Oh, but it's just the fact that you see them all just sit down at the same time and people just stand up and leave. I don't blame them. <laughs> Presumably to complain. Because it's England and people always fucking complain about everything. But, oh, God, that was hilarious. Just do, do, do. Because you just see it and you, you, can, you can't do anything but laugh. When yeah. you see something like that ridiculous, that for fuck's sake. And, like, obviously, well, to be fair, I was going to say, obviously you know that they're probably getting the money back, but I don't know with something like Trigger Happy TV. So I know yeah, cause that was all done, like, that's one of those very early... People don't know what we're talking about, Trigger Happy TV, Americans might not be aware of it. It's like a very early hidden camera prank show, like, just done by one guy. It was all one guy, and he just... They had a couple of recurring bits, and it's one of those shows that um, I like to describe it as existing before streaming. Right. Because yeah. it's one of those I tried watching a couple episodes a while ago and went, oh, they did not expect you to watch these back to back. No. Because when you watch them back to back, you realize it's the exact same skits, just with different outfits or location. Mm-hmm. And once you've seen one episode, you've seen there's a couple of like recurring bits in it that were very, very funny. And I think still hold up today. Like uh, my favorite just recurring gag is people dress like animals kicking the shit out of each other. Do you remember those ones? Really, no. Where it'd be people like in giant dog costumes. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah and they just do so. things like there'd be a guy just dressed like a like a Dalmatian, mm-hmm. just sat reading the newspaper, and then two other Dalmatians go up and just kick the shit out of them. <laughs> and there's a great um, uh, quote from Dom Jolie saying, "Yeah, uh, here's a fun fact for you. Uh, no matter how brutal." And violent those beatdowns were, nobody ever helped. Nobody ever. Like, initially, they were quite funny mm-hmm. because you can just see, like, oh, it's just like two people in like dog costumes. I fight. Like, we started getting like baseball bats, and so obviously the guy's paddling underneath the costume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but it looks watching, like someone just beating the shit out of him. And nobody ever tried to help any of them. Like, no one ever into it. Most people just stopped and laughed. I mean, that thing is. You, obviously, you have to take into context they're in giant fucking dog outfits. Yes. Like, it does look like it's... Ridiculous, a, yeah. ...a prank or a show or something like that. Um, Obviously, people weren't expecting hidden prank, like, hidden camera prank shows back then. Yes, that is one of the very earliest ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, really early, yeah. Um, but you've <laughs> got to think in your head, something's going on, because they're all in giant dog outfits. Yeah. People may have assumed it was a skit. Like this is before like um skits and like pranks on the public were all that common. Obviously, we'd had stuff like um uh, uh, you've been framed or like Beatles about and stuff like that prior to that or Candid Camera. Mm-hmm. But like, this was like the new wave of that. Like, this is pre Jackass, even because this is like a uh, same with like Balls of Steel and stuff like that. Yes, like, that era. Uh, you had Candid Camera and um, uh, Just for Laughs and stuff who've always been around. But then there was like the, I got the new wave, like stuff like Jackass and Trigger Happy TV. And some of those, I contend, are fucking hilarious. Like Airhorn yeah. Golf remains one of the most top tier pieces of comedy ever filmed <laughs> because it's so fucking funny. Because it's just, it's so simple. Yeah, yeah. It's so simple a, a prospect of just you just blow an air horn every time a guy tries to swing a golf club. <laughs> 
and it's great. And it, it is funny every single time. And um, is it uh, Dom as well that did the, the giant phone one? The giant phone, yes. Yeah, and like just bringing out like a what two foot tall giant phone and just screaming at it, but yeah. in public, like on the train or whatever. Yeah, and the joke was, and this is it really dates the um, the content because that was just at the start of mobile phones being a thing. Yeah, and the yeah. joke was that it's a giant Nokia thirty two ten, and you'd get a phone call and it'd be he'd play it through a speaker. So you just hear it, and it was that classic, like, da 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 like that old classic Nokia thing. And you'd always see, before he picked up the giant phone, a few people looked to see if it was their phone. Because then he pulls out the same fucking ringtone. It's like the iPhone thing. If you play the iPhone ringtone, you'll see at least a few people turn around and try to pick up their phone. But then he just picks up a giant two-foot-tall phone <laughs> and just screams into it. Um, did you ever do that, like, when I, when I was younger, I tried this, of, like, being on a bus with, like, iPhone, and you just... Have like the alert noise, yes, on your phone, and you just sit there, like just chill out and just look around and just like, press the alert noise, and like, half of the bus just goes, oh, oh, yeah. I used to do it in college all the time. Yeah, um, I got the alert noise on my Android, and I just play it in class all the time. <laughs> It'd always be the thing of like, put your phones away. I've got Android, sir. So. Uh, okay, <laughs> so it's not. I know it's not you, Carl. There we go. I remember go. I did that once, like the teachers went, well, I know he's not you, Carl, so no, you've got no mates. Like, oh, damn it. Oh, you know no. so those teachers who just like chat shit. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. how you do it. We had one of those teachers who would like always, you know, act friendly to us. And this was a uh, mm-hmm. GCSE, so we were like 15, 16. So obviously you wouldn't act the same way around like 11 year olds, but uh, he would, you know, be like, look, I know you're a bit older. We can have a bit of a joke in class. Mm-hmm. At, until like one of the kids presumably went home and told their parents what jokes we say, and then he got a complaint. Oh, he's just trying to be a nice teacher. Uh, he's just trying. He's trying to give you the respect of that. Oh, he's trying to treat you as like you know a young adult. Yeah, exactly. And talk to you not so much as a student, but as like you know a potential peer. Yeah, and that that was clearly what he was trying to do. And then you just get one parent going like, no, 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 no. You will like teach my children and not try to be mates with them. So like, how dare you be personable? Mm-hmm. And like, he, he was still a lovely guy and he was one of my favorite teachers and made me interested in something I didn't give a shit about. So clearly he was doing it right. But what subject is he taught? Uh, it was like design and technology. Ah, okay. DT. So, uh, uh, I was specifically doing like product design. Okay. But, um, yeah, it was just something like I wasn't that into, but we had to pick one of them because we were like a technology college. You just um, picked that one. So we had to pick one of them, and I didn't want to do like electronics. See, but... I remember our old DT teacher, Mr. Jutler. Mm. Uh, he was Sikh, and he was one of the nicest guys in the school. And um, I remember once um, he got in trouble because he punched a student. And okay. I was like, there's no fucking way he punched a student. Hmm. There's no way Mr. Jutter would punch a student. And his parents came in and they played holy hell up and they were fucking ranting and raving like, how dare someone have done that? And then it turns out that the student had knocked his turban off. Oh. And they'd run up and they'd knocked his turban off his head and he'd turn around and he'd punch them. And then the, when, and apparently that's, uh, the school just went, yeah, well... Um, and I think the, those, when it like you know it filtered down to school level, when mm. people found out what happened, it's like uh, you can you know report him for punching your son, who's like sixteen at this point. But um, we're prepared to put it through as a hate crime and give him a fucking criminal record. And I think they just agree, okay, no charges will be filed against either yeah. party. But yeah, don't knock a seat guy's head, like fucking turban off. Dig move. Respect other people's culture. You fucking duck at it. But it's like apparently as well, it was a fucking clean it. <laughs> I'd fucking hope so. He was a clean hit from Mr. Jolla, so well played him. And I told you, you know about we had t- teachers who cheated on each other. Me, one Mr. Mickey, Miss Mickey, and Mr. Disney. Yeah. Joyce thought it was pretty funny. Oh, it was great. I, I used, to, I love like teachers. Like there's a friend of mine who told me he had like a um, a math teacher or something like. No, he had a, a music teacher like Mr. Tim, like a woodworking teacher called Mr. Wood, and then a math teacher called Mr. Piano. <laughs> And I was like, I always thought I was just Mr. Piano. So you're going to be a teacher, be a fucking music teacher with a name like that. Yeah. Like, there's only one thing you can teach, and you're called Mr. Fucking Piano. And that's the saxophone guy. 
do it. <laughs> you know, like, what was the way the weirdest name you had for a teacher in your school? The one that sticks out in your head? Because the one for me is we had a teacher, I shit you not, called Miss Fish. Oh, God. <laughs> like, she fucking quit. <laughs> and like, I feel so bad talking about you go into like a fucking working class public school that's rough as fuck and you've got a name like Miss Fish. Yeah. You better have like a fucking like some thick skin or a sense of humor. Yeah, our uh, our form teacher for a few years was called uh, Miss McDonald. And obviously for like a bunch of kids that was just low hanging fruit. Yeah. And just every fucking day you could just see it like oh, better. And then she got married and unsurprisingly like took the husband's name. <laughs> and it's like, I'm not fucking Miss McDonald anymore. Like, stop it. Oh, that was so rough. But I just remember the fucking Miss Fish. Just the day she came in, as soon as I saw that on my, um, uh, like, oh, what my class was today, new teacher, Miss Fish. Oh, oh that's going <laughs> to... Because all that was is every time her name was on a board anywhere, someone would put a Y at the end. <laughs> so it was Miss Fishy. That's all it was. It's all it was. But <laughs> everyone just, just Miss Fishy. All it takes. Yeah. I think there was um, another teacher called like Forest, and there was a lot of just like oh bus jokes going on. The thing is, I'm a small one, so I I know. Yeah, honestly, that's why I'm like I feel for people with those names. But at the same time, like I've dealt with it for years. So like the only thing you do that, like, especially with kids or people with like you know the mental um uh, like, the capacity of children, like mm-hmm. you know people on the internet, is you just have to like yeah, heard it all before. Yeah, you have to, like, all roll the comments I get about my hair, I'm just like yeah, yeah. okay. Cool. So we had another teacher like Mr. Clifford. A lot of people may thought, oh, Clifford the big red dog. Yeah. And he just did not give a fuck. And he just likes, uh, because obviously, not obviously, but like Miss, uh, Clifford the big red dog, like show for kids. Yeah. And it's teenagers that like, were in that school, like it's a high school. So whenever someone came in and was like, oh, Miss Clifford the big red dog, and he goes, so do you still watch cartoons then? <laughs> and, he'd all, and he'd just always shut up straight away. Uh, do you still watch CBBS? Uh... Got a, I've got a younger brother. Yeah, it's like I thought someone your age would watch something a bit more like advanced than um, a children's show, and you just stop the joke straight away. I should have just been there, like, mate. Do you not watch Dragon Ball? Like, get on that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that shit's it. awesome. Dragon Ball's so sick. It's the coolest. Still so sick, and I, I love like just thinking back to being told when I was a kid, like, yeah, all those stupid stuff like Dragon Ball. Just get over it. Like, you won't care about that in a couple of years. And I'm here. Like nearly 30 years old, like, watching Dragon Ball every day, like, yeah! The, the people who did, though, um, whenever you see them or bump into them, do you only have that unfortunate thing? I'm, I'm not sure if you ever experienced this. Did you ever bump into anyone from high school um, who was like that in a nightclub and just yeah. have them try and talk to you like they were your best mate because they recognised you from high school? Yeah. And you're just like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, um, I remember, like, back in uh, uni, I bumped into someone from high school and he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you. You're the one who could, like, grow a beard when we were, like, 14. I don't remember your name, but I remember you could grow a beard. I was like, we had French class for five years, and you were an asshole to me. Like, so fuck why would you. I... It happens all the time. Like, I... I remember you being a massive prick, and I remember you, like, the moment I saw you in that nightclub, and I avoided him for a good couple of hours, and then he just, like appeared right behind me in the bar and was like, oh, look, it's you. And it's like, I have no interest in ever speaking to you again. <laughs> yeah, I tried to avoid you in high school. I'm especially trying to avoid you on a night out. Oh, man. That's why I think like one of the movies that like, hits home the hardest now for me is um, World's End. Oh, yeah. Like, the older I get, the more that film really speaks to me. Mm-hmm. Of like because we've all known and the weird part is people say they I remind them of the main character because <laughs> I drink. It's like no, no, that guy is stuck in the past. And I think we've all met that person who's like they cannot move past that one period where they peaked when they were quite young, whether it be high school, college, or what have you. Mm. And those people are so fucking depressing to talk to. Yeah. And they're so depressing to talk to on nights out when they're still trying to like, you know, relive those glory days or pretend that. You know, I off they still act like everyone else. It's like, oh yeah, that was the best time. I was like, mate, like I was sixteen and I had no fucking money, and I got picked on in school every fucking day. I've got a job now. Why would I think about all that shit? Why would yeah. I care? And like, I know people might be sitting here thinking, oh, but Carl and Lucas tell a lot of stories from like their past. Are they not doing the same? It's like it's not the same because we're sitting there going, oh, they were fun, but like 
isn't life good now? Yes. Aren't we just sitting here talking shit on the internet for a living? Like, this is great. Yeah. Whereas those people are going, no, 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 life is shit now. Like, I loved it when we were 17 and I was the king of the fucking world. And the older they get, the sadder it becomes. And I've met many people who just every time I like bump into them, like, you know, like friends of friends and stuff, and all they ever talk about is the last time we all hung out and drank. Mm hmm. And like whenever we're like, you know, in those group situations where everyone's like, you know, sharing things they've done over the last year. It's like people are on holiday, people are getting new jobs, people are like, you know, like going back to university, and like learning new skills and all that stuff. And all they want to talk about is the last time we went on a night out. That's the only stories they have from like mm -hmm. the past year since we've seen them is the stuff that we all experience together because it's the only thing they do. Yeah. Is sit on their ass and just wait for the next night out. Yeah. It's, and it, oh, it's no. one of those, we all enjoy those moments. It's it's not as if they aren't fun, but yeah, you've got to also, you know, try and appreciate what's going on around you in between those times and make the most of your life rather than just sitting there waiting for the next night out. I'll I'll say that there's nothing. I'm not saying there are things sadder than it, but there's like to me, there's there's nothing that immediately speaks to mind as being just sadder than the people who live for the weekend. Oh right, yeah. And like, have you ever encountered people like that? Like, I, I get when, you know, if you're working, like, a crappy job and the only thing you, you've got is, like, the, you know, the time outside of work and... Yeah, John just clarify as well for people who maybe don't know what living for the weekend is. Like, weekend warriors. Yeah. It, weekend ballers. Just kind of, like, people who literally just... The moment Monday hits, it's like, well, I can't wait for, like, Saturday night and I'm going to just not give a shit about my entire week and just pray for the fucking the next night out what we can have on Saturday. Yeah, the the people who they will the only thing they seemingly look forward to or discuss, talk about, or show any interest or excitement about is just getting absolutely fucking annihilated on a Friday or a Saturday, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah. And yeah, I'm, I've I, you know gone. I, I'm partial to a night out every now and again, but the idea that the only thing they look forward to is the one night of the week where they can drink so much they forget everything else. Yeah. It's like, oh, God, that's not depressing. That's just like alcoholism, just like just stretched out over a couple more days. Well, the, the, surely it's like condensed. The condensed no, think, into one night. It's condensed into one night, but then it's stretched out over seven days because like, it's not like you're waiting for your next drink the next day. Mm, yeah, yeah, true. Like, that just feels like just, you know, um, uh, just dying but slower. And I, I'd say, like, I get, and I've been in that situation for many years before this, sort of, like, you know, the last year mm -hmm. where I was working in jobs that I fucking hated and I couldn't wait to get out of work. But yes. the idea that they don't want to be out of work, they just want to be on the next night out. That's when it's like, oh, okay, you like you don't care about chilling out of an evening and you know sitting there with your partner or your family or whatever and just watching a bit of T V and chilling out or going for a jog or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. All you care about is being absolutely hammered at two o'clock in the morning or something. And that's the moment. It's like um, uh, the people that you bump into um, on nights out, mm. like, that you went to school with, and you just look at them and you go, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> well, you look at them and go, like, you look 10 years older than I do. Yeah. And, we, and I know we're the same age because I know we're in the same class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's, there's times when I go, like, Ooh, you know, I'm starting to look a bit old. Oh yeah, I'm aging. Go. Yeah, oh, like we are all cool. aging, obviously. But Do you know what these are right here, mate. This is the fucking comment section right here, <laughs> buried in my fucking skull. And then there's times when I go, oh man, I like, I I look rough for early thirty because I'm like 29, and then I mm -hmm. look at other people who I, as you say, like I went to school or something. It's like, but it could be worse. Yeah, it is. You look at them and go, fucking hell. Mm. Father time to go back to that one. God. And like, obviously, a lot of time, you know, it's not just the fact that they're not looking after themselves. I get it. But yeah, sometimes you've got to like, at least I've got a full head of hair so far, so far. Fingers oh, yeah. crossed, another 10 years I can get out of this. Well, that's the thing. Like, you've got, um, I like to say that my primary motivator in life is spite. <laughs> my primary motivator for most things is spite. Mm. And um, one of the reasons I like, um, all I am one of the things that keeps me going, especially when you know, I'm uh, feel like, oh man, 
I, do I really want to do it? So like, yeah, because there are people out there who hate me, and they hate me because they ain't me, and that gets me going. <laughs> it's like you do it. They hate us because they ain't us. You got to do it. It's the always the primary motivator for most of my life. But I feel like um, you know we've had a pretty good discussion here, and I've been looking at the time now. It's an mm-hmm. hour and twenty minutes of the podcast. So for people in my chat, I know you're in there. I can see you. I can see your numbers. You've been like you know chi- um, slightly chatting away, uh, but. Um, not but, but for you for you guys, if you'd like to ask some questions, we're gonna do Q and A in a few minutes. And if you put exclamation point Lucas, you can find Lucas's chat as well. Hell yeah! And Lucas will be reading out some questions. I'll be reading out some questions. We'll do this in a few. But before then, Lucas, anything you'd like to plug? Anything I would like to plug? Well, Carl. Yeah. I will do. You know my usual weekly plug. Have you heard it many a time? If you're a I've done, I've listener, gone. remind me. It is that you can find me doing gaming things on both YouTube and here on Twitch. At Legend of Canto. Okay, and for me, just Carl Smallwood. Google it, you'll find me. There we go. And I will specifically plug as well the fact that like, if you go to my YouTube right now, again, at Legend of Canto, you can watch a 20-minute mi- video of me and Carl experiencing the world of Balan Wonderland. I, I watched that. Wonderworld? I was like, Wonderworld? I was Wonderland? Wonder- I don't whatever care. Whatever the fuck it is. But I was like, the fuck? Because I remember it being bad. <laughs> I remember it being ba- bad. And I watched it and went, oh my, I forgot that they were, one, charging $60 for this, <laughs> and two, they describe it as the pinnacle of Square Enix RPG storytelling. Yep. And that game is fucking horrendous. The man who Do not play it. the storm, Carl. Do not play it. Don't, Do not don't. play that game. Like, you, you need to, like, I played 10 seconds of that game before I was like, this is terrible. Yeah, do Nobody not, should do be not buying buy this. Do not buy it. Do not support that level of laziness. And so what I want to talk about, I guess, what people are filming to ask their questions, which we'll get to in a moment, is just, have you seen this game reverse review bombed? Yeah, you briefly mentioned that to me, and I looked it up, and what, the first thing that I uh, found when I just That's typed in the world... Like, yeah. We can like, do that now. Balan Wonderworld is just an article going... Balan Wonderworld is getting a lot of 10 out of 10 re- like user review scores. What is going on? Yes. So, if people don't know, Balan Wonderworld is a fucking god-awful piece of shit game. Mm-hmm. That it came out yeah. a few days ago when it's made by like Balan Company and published by Sega, I believe. Yeah, and it's made by the guy who made Sonic, or created Sonic, and some other chuckle fucker should be embarrassed to put his name on it. <laughs> and the game is god-awful. And the thing that makes it worse is... It's so lazy. Yeah. It just recycled shitty Sonic OCs. And as well, like, you have one button in the game. Yeah, well, you might as well bu- have one button in the game because you have a single action for your character and it's jump. And then whenever you pick up, like, a, essentially a power up, that jump gets replaced with one other single ability. And you have, like, the A, B, X, and Y, and the two triggers all do that one action. That's how, like, yeah, little there is to the game yeah there is more gameplay in fucking skylanders which not is way more gameplay, gameplay in skylanders yeah and i have now in front of me just the reviews of bail and wonderworld um on metacritic these are user reviews and these are the xbox reviews but um, obviously they'll, they'll be reminiscent of like they'll be reflective sorry of uh, reviews for the consoles mm-hmm. 10 out of 10 this game is a pra- this game is practically awesome and easy must have played and adored this masterpiece and for the visual watchers, you can just see Lucas's face as he's trying not to laugh at this. The most memorable platform game ever made, a wonderful game to play every single day, even in co-op, would recommend to all platform gamers. 10 out of 10, a definitely an incredibly good platform game, a joyful and colourful game to experience, I can easily recommend. If you are looking for a good and original platform game, this is exactly what you should play. Maybe a little strange to say, but this type of platform game can evolve dramatically when you're going on with your journey. I can safely recommend it. <laughs> An incredible and beautiful journey to explore with multiple amazing worlds. In this aspect, this game shines with great art design, a joy to experience. Surely the best platform game made for a Switch. Also, the Mario ignore... Odyssey exists on the Switch. Also, I also suggest to ignore the ridiculous negative reviews. They are made by crybabies that don't even try to play this. <laughs> this is the. This is what I love about it. It's salty Sonic fanboys who are like, they can't accept that the guy who made Sonic 06 made a bad game. Mm-hmm. Bell and Wonderworld is a wonderful game, the kind of game that leads something to the player, 
a nice platform with an honest, cool theme. Absolutely play it. These don't people listen are deluded. To I, the, the, There's no other word. Don't listen to the negative reviews here because they all the people don't even play this game. This game is actually a good platform game. I should note that as well. A lot of these reviews were posted for this before the game was officially available. For of course, release. yeah. So, but don't listen to the reviews from people who've not played the game. <laughs> listen to my review posted before the is game there, was able. Um, uh, like critic score on there yet? Uh, the critic score is Balon Wonderworld. Uh, critic score. No score yet based on because they need a fourth review. There are only three reviews, but three reviews so far are um, three out of ten, three out of ten, two out of ten. <laughs> uh, and the oh, yeah. so that would average out at about like you know two point uh, seven out of ten. Yeah. The average u- user score is seven point six out of ten. Every positive review is um, a ten out of ten, and every every negative review is a zero out of ten. Because you know what? That's what user scores are. Yeah, that is what user scores. Yeah, well, here we go. Interesting and entertaining platform game. I've especially enjoyed a lot of the late sessions of the game and the adorable CG cutscenes. One of the best games I've ever played. Amazing and fun with awesome gameplay and incredible designs. Absolutely gorgeous game. I um, I actually experienced a little bit of this not long ago. I went to okay. check out Resident Evil 3 on sale, uh, the remake okay. for it. And the amount of reviews that were zero stars... I love Resident Evil, but this game only took me six hours to complete. Absolute waste of fucking money. This is trash. Or like, 10 out of 10. No, That's why to you... be fair, there were very few like five-star reviews on the Xbox. Like okay. A lot of people were going like, this is the worst fucking thing ever. Or there was like people going, oh, like four out of five, this game's great. I love Resident Evil. It's a bit short. Because yeah, usually with user reviews, it's why they're basically valueless. It's either 10 out of 10 or 0 out of 10. There's no nuance. It's either the best thing I've ever played or it's a god-awful piece of shit. That reminds me of the best review of anything I've ever read. Because when I was trying to get the More 4 app for my Xbox, and that app is terrible. Yeah. And I tried to download it and uninstalled it immediately because it's just full of ads. But yeah. I went to like, the, ad, the review thing because I noticed it had like two-star reviews. Mm. Out of like 500 reviews, and just the number one review on the Xbox like app download place with like 400 like pluses of like 400 people recommending this is just one star, and it reads below wank app. That's <laughs> that's all you need. One star wank app done. I agree done. with that verdict. Uh, fantastic, so just fantastic. A revolutionary platform game. Easily one of the best games I've played all this year. I'm really happy to express my modest opinion regarding this already controversial game. They gave it a 10 out of 10. Their <laughs> modest opinion. I'm happy to say this game is amazingly good. Reminds me of old school platform games. You mean bad. And if you do like the platform, you should give this a try. You know what it does Please. remind me of, Carl? Those awful platformers that hadn't figured out 3D yet. Yeah. Literally the best platformer I've ever played on Switch. Like, it's like HD bubbly 3D. That's what shit's going on there. The game is the most wonderful and fun platform game I've ever played. Maybe this game isn't perfect. 10 out of 10. They started with maybe it's not perfect, but they gave it a perfect 10 out of 10. Literally a pure joy to play. It's this not kind of perfect, game, perfect score. I'll hugely love this wonderful Wonder World. Yeah, a truly unique game. I like it, especially the wonderful soundtrack and beautiful worlds created. What really shines here is the great level design. Good work, Square Enix. This is a remarkable game. Lol, who doesn't even try to play the full game? This, how much are the desperate haters these days? This game is much better than many of the ridiculous platformers today by Krill and Phil, 10 out of 10, posted on March 28th. You know what? Yeah, fair enough. Um, 10 out of 10 OST, 10 out of 10 level design, 10 out of 10 art. I love the whole message being given by this game. To clarify for anyone that isn't aware, like, Carl and I didn't even know what was happening. Yeah, we, but, we could not follow the story at all. If there is a story. Uh, it was just a weird vignette at the end, and then a man turned into a giant like, wolf dragon. Oh, we have one here. This... Inexplicable reason. There's, a, re- there's um, a review here from Jiren, so I'm inclined to believe him, because like Jiren the Grey. <laughs> I suggest to give this game a try, because it's a hidden gem of the platform genre. It, to the point where like they can't even get people to review it. It's so bad, people aren't even reviewing it. Yeah, because at the end of the day, like it's giving it publicity, isn't it? Yeah, the most shiny and original platform game in the last 10 years. Mario Odyssey came out a couple of years ago. Yeah. Bale and Wonderworld is a must-play game, an absolute gem. 
literally the most beautiful platform game ever made. Everybody should play this incredible game. Please, nobody. Nobody the best play game the game. And there is a demo on Nintendo Switch, so presumably other platformer, like all the yeah. platforms. If you genuinely like hearing any of this and still want to try the game, go play the, just play uh, the demo for free. Never give these people money. And then, oh, go watch like Luke's video. Of, like, we're completely baffled by it. The funniest oh. and cutest platformer I've ever played. The simple mechanics of the different costumes make it a constant evolution. Multiple different approaches to all the levels of the game. This is a fun game. Would recommend over many often overrated triple A video games. Of course. Nine hours in, and I'm yet to have my first seizure. Ten out of ten. Yeah, I love that. just to the clarify, game. before the day one patch, there was seizure seizure inducing effects at the final boss. So that's why they didn't get a seizure up to that point. It was specifically in the final boss. At certain points, there would be just rapid like flashing bright lights on your screen and apparently so, it's been what? solved in a day one patch but well, how low are your fucking standards where a game doesn't give you a seizure yeah but that's clearly like that person commenting going i've got you you like gacha journalist there's no seizure inducing effects in this game that will presumably because you downloaded a day one patch and didn't get to the final boss yet anyway Literally the most beautiful platform game ever. If you are seriously searching for a colourful and finely original platform game inspired by the classics, you should definitely buy Bale and Wonderworld. Just go get Mario Odyssey. Original and interesting game with a powerful theme. This is basically the best kind of platform that anyone can ever even remotely ask for. Magnificent platform design mixed with phenomenal gameplay. And this is the level of people that you're dealing with when yeah. it comes to Sonic fans. Uh, we have one here, uh, a 10 out of 10 from Balen Fan 69 This may be the best game of all time. I really don't have high expectations for this game. I thought it's just another platform that's just like Mario trash. Nothing like the good games like Cyberpunk. I think that one might be sarcastic. Maybe. Then yeah. we have some of the zero star reviews of uh, Final Boss Nearly Killed Me, and I'm not talking about in-game. Oh, God. This game is a dumpster fire. It is. Uh, as far as an overpriced bad games go, this is the highest in recent memory. Do not trust these positive reviews. This game is garbage. Yeah, so the negative ones are actually like, usually the negative ones are just like, no, fuck it. The, they put a woman or a, a black person in it. I hate it. The, like, that's the rare time or situation where a zero star review is actually giving you more honesty. Yeah. That's sure. um, Alien Wonderworld, the game we review now. But uh, I think we had enough time. So one more time, I'll let people... Eh. I've got to reach over my fucking bullshit here to type for Lucas so people can see. <laughs> uh, so, eh, then Lucas. I love our Nightbot where Nightbot does this for me. So, there we go. So, if you want to go like, ask some questions in Lucas' chat, I'll go through mine. So, some quick look now. Do, yeah. do, do, so, do, do. pop any questions in my chat. Uh, feel free. Yeah. The thing is, though, no one's like asked any questions yet. So, good for them. That means it's easier for us because it means we can leave earlier. <laughs> like, one guy asked a question. Someone has Asian friends. Are you worried about the increasing violence against them? Yeah. What yeah. stupid fucking... Are you worried about people you know being hurt by morons? Yes. What's and regardless awful... of whether they're my friends or not... I still care. Yeah. What an awful question. I mean, shout out to that, um, that granny that like beat the crap out of her attacker. Fucking too, right? Well, like, yeah. Uh, just what an awful question. Are you worried? Yeah, of course I am. Because I've got empathy and I'm a human. Yeah. If I wasn't, that would be like, you know, something worth noting. Like, here's the thing. Just assume I have empathy for others. Mm -hmm. Just think, will you do a video on Invincible? I don't do requests. So, yeah. I, uh, I watched like a few clips of that and just like heard good things, but uh, it felt quite flat and like the animation just kind of lacked any um. Yeah, like, so from what I have... saw anyway, I'm going to eventually like watch a bit of it, but. It's on my list. Like Charlie rates it quite highly, and you know, I trust his um, opinion on that sort of thing. But mm -hmm. it's like there's that new Pacific Rim cartoon out, and I watched like five minutes of it and went, "The reason I like Pacific Rim is not because of the great characters; it's because mm -hmm. it's giant fucking robots fighting monsters." Yeah, totally. And you kind of ruined that with this all. It's that weird, shitty, like rotoscoped anime style. Yeah. It's like there was another one which was. Um, like gods of something or other where it's a uh, it's about ancient greece 
Um, okay. All of the advertising stuff for it shows like, uh, like ancient Greek pottery, that kind of style. Yes. Like black on um, like the, uh, the yellowy pot. Like so all the like musical parts of like Hercules. Yes, yes, exactly like that. Yeah, that's what a lot of the um, uh, like trailers and stuff show. Mm-hmm. But the actual show itself is not that. It's just a generic bad-looking anime that looks really cheaply made. I went, oh. Yeah. But screw having unique art styles, eh? Yeah, I was mad hype for one of like Greek pottery. Mm. So that's an interesting art style, and I'm really looking forward to see what they can do with this limited color palette of just using black and red. Mm-hmm. So, nope. Instead, it's boring <laughs> as fuck. It just looks like anything else. It looks really cheaply made. So it would have been cheaper to make it with like you know the simple color scheme, but at least it'd been visually striking. But who wants that, eh? Who wants you that? You can fart it out for free, <laughs> whatever. But yeah, I was excited about that one. Uh, but yeah, any questions in your chat, Lucas? Yeah, uh, this is one we get asked like in a different way quite a bit, and like just yeah. things about drinking games and like the, yeah. the one drinking game that I would recommend is just Mario Kart drinking game. Mario Kart, yes. Mario Kart, and it's just like you know, people don't know what it is. It's the the basic version of it is you have a drink, so say you have a cup of a drink, and you have to finish that drink before you finish the race. And you can't you can... drive and drink at the same time. That's against the law. It is. Well, it's uh, against the law to also be drunk while you're driving, Carl. At the same time, this is Mario Kart. Exactly. So, yeah. And uh, there's extra rules where you can do it with, like, double dash. If you have a friend who has double dash, where like, you can, like, uh, the person in the back can drink. And then you can also go, like, full better with it, where you have two people sat on chairs like in front and behind each other and you have to swap when you swap and there's extra shit you can add to it but yeah beerio cart and there's a bunch of tactics to it as well like um uh, just parking on the finish line and just downing your pint and then going across the finish line mm-hmm. or doing it before you start and then you get all the best items there's a bunch of ways to do it or like get a mushroom press your mushroom then take a sip because you're not driving but you are boosting True, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like secret hidden tech to doing that sort of thing but yeah it's a super fun game but for the most part um, drinking games are just something that they're, they're better when you ex- just ex- not experience them but come up with them just over time and they're based around like something like you have an interest in because like yeah. a drinking game I find interesting might not be work for another mm-hmm. and just if there's like a hobby or something that you like doing with friends and alcohol is evolved maybe turn it into a drinking game if you're planning on you know trying to make it interesting yeah why not like if, like if you're playing cards or something like that just like put a shot in the little table Yes, yeah, like you were saying, you know, uh, what we might do if we can like all get together and play Yu-Gi-Oh is just, oh, put a bottle of something in the middle and whoever loses the Yu-Gi-Oh battle just has to do a shot. Yeah, and then we have someone actually asking about it in my chat, which is since the Yu-Gi-Oh card on stream, will you guys play it for a stream? We will when we're all able to meet up in person. There's no mm-hmm. point doing it like this because I feel the only reason I want to play cards is because you know, it's that physical, tactile sensation of playing cards. Yeah, It feels to me like a more personable thing that you do when you sat across from somebody. It'd feel weird doing it over the internet. It would, and I, I don't really get too hyped behind like online card games. I, I don't find that too exciting, but when I'm there in person and I can be like playing around with my cards and like, what do you think this one is called? Like, bam, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Like, fuck you. Yeah. And we could be like super dramatic, and the idea would be that we'd be super fucking dramatic, and we'd yeah. set it up like a. We'd get. I'm going to go fucking ham. <laughs> like, I want to get all the music and stuff like that playing in the background. It presumably be something we do at the Fact Fiend office when we're able to get back there. Yeah. And there are plans to try and potentially revamp the office to make it more conducive to streaming. Oh, cool. Because at the moment it just has like a couple of chairs in there and a TV, but like pr- get proper actual um, streaming equipment and um, office space sorted. Yeah, that'd be cool. To like facilitate that, but uh, there's no plans to play it on a stream for the foreseeable future until we're able to meet up in person, and then even then, it's gonna be a couple months down the line mm. easily. So, there's not much we can do there. And then, yeah, any more questions in your chat? Because that was one for mine about Yu Gi Oh! Yeah, it's a legend asking, um, simply what is the artwork behind me, and it is just a little picture here of um, Goku, like Dragon Ball original style Goku, like young Goku, uh, just sitting on top of his house with like the red on in the background and like a cherry blossom tree next to it and behind me i've got i'm not sure if this is showing up like this little mouse oh yeah i think it is yeah that's robocop that's robocop's chilling and then that's um, a painting of spider-man in front of my green screen that a friend of mine did they've not signed it yet the bastards so they have become famous i can't say it's an original (laughs) i wanted to sign it so they they say it was an original Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and 
just be like, yeah, I can sell it for money. But yeah, that's uh, the weirdest part is when you like, I show stuff like that off. So like, oh, could I buy something similar to it? Why would it's, the reason I want like it is because it's unique to me? Why mm. would I sell it? Or why would they sell it? Yeah, it's very weird. Like, can I have a copy of your personal artwork? No, uh, no, because then it's not personal. <laughs> but yeah, like, there's no more questions in my chat. So I guess we can like you know close it off there. But uh, uh, I've got I'll... one more if if you want to go for it. Go for this one. Uh, just someone in chat asking, what's our favorite or least favorite thing about streaming? Uh, my favorite thing about it is the immediacy. Yes, uh, streaming is um, it's immediate feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for better or worse, and um, like because of that, it's also something that once you're done with streaming, you're done with streaming. Like when I turn the stream off and I like turn everything off, that's it. I'm done. I don't have to think about it anymore. Whereas with, like yeah. traditional recording, it's like I, there is a bunch of extra stuff I have to do after that. And there's, yeah. there's always like extra stuff that you have to do on top. It's whether it's editing or uploading it. So with streaming, it's just fire and forget, and I love that. And I like, think so I like that. Like I do enjoy that part of it, but I also think. There's obviously the downside and the like complete opposite end of it is well when I'm making a video, like if I do something wrong or like if I'm editing Fat Fiend and we can edit out all those like flubbed lines and stuff or something we yeah. we don't want to put in the video and like we can add extra things like you know, extra add extra elements um and do it just in our own time and stuff. Whereas obviously we're streaming because we're not doing it like with fucking producers and stuff on the back end like if you want to change anything like you have to do it there and then just in front of a bunch of people and you're there like oh i'm trying to figure it out like i'm trying to troubleshoot or add things or figure something out like, on the yeah. fly and people are just watching you struggle with it yeah, people have probably heard me like flub a couple of my lines so far so yeah i'm sorry about that like I have noticed that even when you're like uh, podcasting or streaming, every now and then you get in that like making a video mode of like, oh no, wait, I'll I'll redo yeah. that line, and uh, I I get it because obviously you have to do that for Fat Fiend and that's a lot yeah. of your recording time. And it's because as well I tend to um, uh, just speak too quickly, so I like mm -hmm. to slow down, try not to speak, and it's just a, a coping mechanism I found of just like stopping to talk so that I can catch up with myself and then say what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was. Uh... Yeah, and I guess the negative would just be the fact that it's um, because of the immediacy. The downside of that is that um, like harassment and abuse is just directly in your eyeballs, and people know that. Yeah, and that so it's a lot more um, uh, open and just trolling and just people being like huge penises. Because something happened the other day. It's like a good example of this of just how um difficult it actually is to just shield yourself from that is there was a dude if you remember lucas was just asking a question that i didn't want to answer oh and they were saying oh, do you have any recommendations like look and i tried to explain as nicely as i could look i don't do recommendations for people i don't know who you are and i'm all and i don't know your situation mm -hmm. and i don't want to like recommend you something that then you come back at me and say that you didn't like it or you spent money on something that you didn't like and mm -hmm. it's just Rather, I you would know, just like, insulate myself from that if you don't mind. And That's then they asked again, and then again, and then again, and then it got to the point where I said, "Look, mate, I've answered this a few times. Like, I've been polite as I can. Stop fucking asking that question." And you even had like, because obviously we can hear you responding to the question. Yes. Like Charlie and I both telling this person, "Look, mate, like Carl's been polite about it. He clearly doesn't want to answer the question. Stop asking." And then I, we just heard you over and over again, like, "Look." Mate, I don't want to answer that question. And you've already I've already explained myself and blah blah blah. And yeah, he just kept pushing and pushing. Yeah. And then after I said that, they responded again of like, oh, you didn't understand what I was trying to say. It's like, now just please stop talking. We're done with this now. Mm -hmm. And again, kept going. So I banned them from chat. And then a wonderful feature Twitch has is that once people are banned from chat, they can come back in and continue to fucking they get that one last chance to talk to you. So then, even after I've told them, look, I don't want to talk about this anymore, they get to put a ban request in or an unban request. They get one last chance to speak to you. I, block, I deny that request. And then this morning, I checked. So I didn't realize I got this. They also sent me a DM to my account. So even after you ask someone not to talk to you, you like three or four times directly to camera while they're listening, please stop doing this. And then you press the button. That means they can no longer interact with you. They still have two more opportunities to do so. Mm -hmm. And that all happened like live on camera for people to see. Yeah. 
And that's just something I had to deal with live on camera. That's like a, a downside of the positive that I listed, I suppose. And I think the positive for me would be like my favorite part of this is like the opposite side of when people are being positive and like if you know you're getting a lot of people in chat like if you're playing a game like oh you know like you can do it whatever like people coming in saying how much they enjoy the content people that's really nice, having yeah. an enjoyable conversation with you and that's the nice part about it and that's probably the reason we keep going because it's not all just obviously people being assholes to us there are a lot of people that come be lovely people but that's the thing of it's um, really difficult to tell a story about that when someone came in and said something nice or like i like the channel or whatever it's not a specific um instance that i can think of but more just yeah. in general it's a nice thing of like a lot of people come in positive and just, is that... uh, yeah enjoy stuff and is that shame that the negative things tend to stick out more because they're negative and that's but... just kind of like human like programming so, isn't it i guess yeah. it's human nature to just see the negative but as well it makes it funny and plus i get to monetize it now <laughs> i turn it into my mention on stream oh, but yeah i think that's a good way to end it nice yeah just if someone tells you to drop a subject fucking drop that subject <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard is it really not